So I was asked to do a video on how to make the cut and sew vestment. Uh, this is a vestment fabric I sell on Etsy. I did this at one time, um, a series of videos, but the camera broke and I wasn't able to put them up. I didn't think I needed to because I have plenty of videos up on how to put a vestment together, but I was asked to do this, so I am. So what do you get? You get three pieces of fabric. One has the um, the front on it. That's this piece here. It has the front. Uh, the The design is already printed on it. There's lines, outlines to show you where to cut. And um, this particular one is done on satin, which I do not recommend. I always recommend the sateen. The satin is very thin. Uh, and if you use satin, you will have to use an inner liner um, to keep it stable. You can, with the, with the, the sateen, uh, it's a, a medium weight. You can get away without a stabilizer with that one. Um, and the velvet is much heavier. You, you and that's what I did the video on was before was the velvet is much heavier, and you definitely don't need an inner liner with it at all. With the sateen or the velvet, you can get away without an inner liner. Um, so, but with the satin, you definitely need one. So I'm going to in this video, not in this one, but in this series, I will show you how to apply an inner liner to this type of fabric and how it would work. So um, this is um, the front. This is the second uh, piece of fabric you get is the pieces. That's the chalice veil, the maniple, the stole. Um, chalice veil, maniple, stole, yes. Um, the, the design is already on each of the pieces, so you don't need those. You just need the fabric. That's what this is called a cut and sew. You don't need too many extra materials, but here in this video, I will show you what other materials you do need because you do need some. Um, so that's the accessories piece. And then this piece is the, um, the back of the vestment. And this particular one is Our Lady of, has Our Lady of Sorrows, but I changed this one because I needed Our Lady of Good Counsel for a set of vestments. But normally Our Lady of Sorrows is in that space in the center if you buy this one. Um, the, again, the design is already there. It's, it's, it's very nice. The color is very good and it's, the pictures are very distinct and you just need to cut it out. This also has a maniple in the bottom, which means there's two maniples in this set. You only need one. One is, um, that one is um, one piece. The other one is two pieces you have to sew together. So what else do you need? You'll need lining fabric. I'm going to be using with this particular vestment, a gold lining fabric. How much lining fabric do you need? Depends upon how wide it is. You'll need from three to five yards. Um, if your lining fabric is 54 wide, which is what this fabric is, you can get away with three yards. If it's 40, if less than 54, you'll need to go with four yards or even three. Um, any kind of lining fabric is good. Uh, this is regular gold lining fabric. Um, so, um, I lost the audio on this. I have to read, I'm redoing the audio. So it's, what, what interlining do you need? Well, um, this particular fabric, you can use different things. This one is, um, uh, muslin, medium weight muslin. This one is, um, a cotton broad cotton broadcloth cloth, which is again a kind of a medium weight. Um, you can use old linen. That's what this is: old linen um, tablecloths, altar linens that are no longer needed or used. 
you can re repurpose them for interlining. The original vestments, old vestments, used to be made with uh, linen as their interlining. That was usually a, a poor quality lining, uh, but you can um, use use pretty much anything inside. You can this you can use an old sheet if this what this is is an old sheet, and uh, it's again a medium weight, probably a cotton percal. Um, I will. Um, it's it's old and but it still can be repurposed for as an interlining. So whatever you want to use, because it is an interlining you're going to need to attach it to the satin in this case. So you're going to need an, uh, an adhesive. Um, for this, I would use a uh, spray adhesive, and that's what I have here. Uh, this is Elmer's spray adhesive for crafts, but also for fabrics. I got this at the fabric shop. It's, I think it's a quilting spray. Or I used to use a quilting spray. I got this instead. I've used it. It's fine. You could use, I, I don't recommend for this using steamacine, but if you, you have an iron on stabilizer and not the, that is a cloth stabilizer, you could use that instead. Uh, you're also going to need for the edge trim, the, the vestment itself, because the design has trim around the, doesn't have trim, but it has a border around the design. So you don't need a border cross or column trim but you will need an edge trim if you're because you're lining it unless you want to do right sides together turn inside out in which case you don't even need the edge trim um, I'm going to be using edge trim but I can show you how to do it with um, without uh, the the accessory pieces I will not be I'll be doing right sides together turn inside out but I generally do the front and back with an edge trim. The, the, this particular vestment is a shoulder, meets at the shoulder instead of the chest. And that goes together in a different manner. Um, but there is videos on, I did videos on that. The green velvet vestment was that way. Um, so I'm going to be using this white and gold or this one of these two. They're, they're both, the one is about a half an inch wide. The other is slightly less. It's about an eighth of an inch less. So it's um, more like three eighths instead of four eighths. Um, I'm not sure which one I will use, but I'll decide that when I, when I go to do it. Um, or I may just not use trim at all and just do the right size together, turn inside out. But again, because this is a shoulder one and it will be put together a little bit differently. Um, you also need some tw twill tape. Um, you need about four yards. These are three yard packages, so you need two packages. You'll have extra, but you can always cut off about 18 inches from each one. Um, so, but you do, will need some, um, some, some twill tape. With because with again, this is a shoulder style, and they don't usually use twill tape, um, but a lot of priests like them, so like it. So I put it on anyway. You'll need two burst boards. Normally, I use nine inch burst boards, but I but um, and so you'll need two of them. This this is just mat uh, fixture frame mat board. And one side will be one color, but the other side is always white. So this this one is, is silver or gray on one side and white on the other. You'll need about eight, six to eight inches of elastic. I've used this gold elastic, but you could use white. This is a white vestment. If it were a colored vestment, you could use, you could still use white, but you'd have to make a, a, a casing for the elastic. So it wouldn't be so, too noticeable. But that's easy to do. I that's, I prefer to use gold because it uh, matches pretty much everything. It goes with most vestments. 
uh, besides that, you need whatever is listed. Uh, I have other videos, two videos on materials, which includes glass head pins, scissors, needles, thread, iron, what sewing machine, all that kind of thing. And um, I would recommend looking at those. But these are what you're going to basically need for this vestment that is not that that is for this particular vestment and is not general materials. Um, but I do recommend looking at the two materials vest, uh, videos. One is most, mostly geared for the Gothic, the other for the Latin, but both of them are good to look at. So this is what you're going to need. Um, the first thing um, you're going to do is cut it out. What I'm looking for now are my scissors which are at. Um, the vestment, this is called a cut and sew because there are lines on this that you just simply have to follow to cut it out. Um, and then you just have to sew it together. So, um, so you're going to follow the outside of those, uh, of these lines. Um, this, the, the burst, this is the manifold at the bottom of this. And it doesn't have a line across at the bottom, but that's because they have this printing put down there. Um, but you can either leave the extra fabric there at the bottom because you're going to turn it anyway, or you can just chalk a line across. But as far as everything else goes, you're, and, and again, you have two different maniples. This one is the one that's um, one piece. The, the one on one of the other fabrics is two pieces that you'll have to sew together. I prefer this one. So all you all you would do is take your scissors and just follow the the dark line. You're going to cut right on the dark line. Well, if you leave a little bit inside, that doesn't matter because that's going to be covered up and turned. This part it's in your seam allowance. But so but just go along and carefully cut it out following the line, um, all the different pieces. Um, I'm not going to use these scissors. I'm just showing this here to get started. I'll find my big shears and, and then cut them all out. It does not take that long, uh, but you want to be careful and cut everything right on the line and make sure your lines are, your cuts are straight, not jagged. And then you're going to go with over it with the iron to get all the creases out from the fabric being folded up in the mail. Uh, now, what I did notice were there were, as again, there were a couple of mistakes. And um, these mistakes are, re uh, are recent. The, the other video that I did, um, the other vestment that I put together, I didn't, I didn't have these problems, but I noticed, first of all, that the burst sides are missing from this one and that there, again, there are two maniples. So uh, changes were made after I had made the other video and made the other vestment. I've made several of these cut and sew and sometime, somewhere along the line, I made some changes that messed things up. The other thing I noticed is that this burst is not as wide as it should be. Well, it's not as wide as I would want it to be. I told you the burst boards are nine inches wide. Well, this burst is actually eight inches fabric, which means it's a seven inch burst. So you need a seven inch burst board. Uh, nine inch could be cut down or you could just have them cut you the seven inch. Um, Bursts can be any size. So the fact that it's different, it's not nine inch doesn't matter. Uh, bursts, I've seen 5-inch bursts, 6-inch bursts, 12-inch bursts, 15-inch bursts. Some larger ones are used for benedictions. Smaller ones are often used for um, traveling uh, mass sets. Uh, the 7, 8, and 9-inch ones are the ones most often used for mass. But again, there's no set size. Now, there's no burst sides. Um, I did... The, in this, I noticed, but there's plenty of, plenty of fabric left here to cut out two burst sides. So I'm going to show you how how that's going to get done. 
Um, so is so apart from the this verse being a not quite what I normally like, it's still usable. And I will make changes to this so that future videos and future um, fabric that you buy will be the right size bursts. So now we need to cut some burst sizes, burst sides. And you have these extra pieces of fabric. These were around the front front. And there's more than enough here to cut two burst sides. Um, the burst side is actually cut on a fold, so you need about 16 inch long piece of fabric because the burst, this pattern for the burst side is eight inch. It's three and a half by eight inches long. Um, I'm double checking the measurements, but it is three and a half by eight inches long. So that when you're done, you get a piece that's three and a half by 16 inches long. So you cut it on folded fabric. So um, you don't have this pattern for the burst size, but you can cut a piece of paper that size, just three and a half by eight inches long, or just use the ruler and measure three and a half by eight inches long. Make sure it's on the fold. And then uh, once you have that piece of paper pattern or marked your fabric, um, you can pin your 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 uh, pattern down and then you're just going to cut it out you're going to need two now the, as i say there's more than enough fabric here to cut more this one piece has a uh, plenty um i'll probably cut it all out of this one piece but there is at least four pieces here that you could use for cutting this two small pieces they're long but they're narrow and you can cut them out of scraps and that's what we usually do when we're cut, making a vestment. Anyway, we cut this, these sides out of scraps. So I'm pinning it down on the, uh, the pieces of scrap satin that I have left. And once I have it cut, it pinned down, I'm just going to cut it out. Again, it's, it's on the fold. And so I'm cutting it. And then I will cut it. Then I will refold the fabric and cut a second one. Okay, so now I have one. Now I'm just going to refold this this fabric and use what I've cut out as a template or pattern and cut a second one. So lining it up with the fold, again, I'm cutting it on the fold and the edge and repinning it as I need two of these. There's two sides to the verse and these are the verse sides. So this is, this video is about the cutting of the pieces. The next video will be about applying the um the the interliner to the satin so in other words putting it down uh putting this attaching the satin to the interliner with the fabric glue So if you're if you're doing a cut and sew vestment made with velvet or cut sateen that you don't need that, uh, you can just skip that video and go to the one after the words. So there's the sides. This is the verse back. And again, all these pieces need to be ironed. And when I press the 
press the 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 burst back, the burst size, front, whatever. I'm also going to press that fold into the um, that burst side. I would iron this this satin. I would iron it from the back, uh, iron the back fit up, and not the shiny side up. And I would uh, iron it on. Uh, it's it's a synthetic, so you don't need a really hot iron for it. I actually ironed it on the lowest steam setting which is is a little hotter than synthetic but I liked the steam to take out the creases in the folds. 